You are about to watch St Richard of Chichester. It's available on DVD at www.marysdairyproductions.org. Please buy one if you enjoy the film, as all sales go to help produce more productions. The city of Chichester in West Sussex, in South East England, has a long history as a settlement and of Christianity. Its Roman past and its subsequent importance in Anglo-Saxon times are only its beginnings. The 12th century cathedral once housed the famous shrine of St Richard, a holy and wise bishop known for his piety during his life and for centuries after his death. The city centre stands on the foundations of the Romano-British city of Novi Omegas Reginorum, capital of the Civitas Reginorum. The walls are medieval, built upon the Roman foundations. The plan of the city is inherited from the Romans. The north, south, east and west shopping streets radiate from the central market cross dating from medieval times. Chichester Cathedral was founded by order of William the Conqueror in 1075 to replace the cathedral founded in 681 by St. Wilfred for the South Saxons at Selsey. Many pilgrims travelled to Chichester, even from abroad, to pray at the Shrine of St. Richard. Its long history as a place of worship included it as a popular place of pilgrimage for the Christian faithful, as popular a destination as the Shrine of St. Thomas Becket in Canterbury. The Shrine of St. Richard of Chichester was one of many destroyed in the early 16th century by order of Thomas Cromwell and King Henry VIII, when the former Catholic King of England broke from the Catholic Church, usurped its properties and created his own Church of England. The richly decorated shrine which housed the relics of St Richard was plundered. The body of the saint destroyed, like many other bodies of saints in England, such as the miraculously preserved body of St Etheldreda, a Saxon princess and abbess of Ely. It is believed that parts of St. Richard's relics were saved during the Protestant Reformation. King Henry VIII placed a cleric of his own in Chichester Cathedral, which remains to this day in the Anglican Communion. Despite the destruction of the shrine, devotion to St. Richard remained among the Christian faithful. And in 1930, the Protestant Church re-established a modern shrine to St. Richard in the place where the original had stood. The Catholic Church offered a relic of St. Richard to the cathedral, together with an authentication certificate, at the same time as the restoration of the shrine. This is now housed 
at the Anglican Bishop's Chapel opposite the cathedral. Interest in and devotion to St. Richard of Chichester remains strong today throughout the world. St. Richard was born in 1197 in Burford, near the town of Wick in Worcestershire. He was from a land-owning farming family and went to study in Oxford. Upon the death of his parents, Richard's elder brother inherited the lands, but was required to pay a medieval form of death duty that left the family so impoverished that St. Richard returned home and condescended to become his brother's servant. He undertook the management of his farms and by his industry and generosity effectually improved his brother's circumstances. Having completed this good work, St. Richard resumed at Paris studies that he had begun at Oxford, leading with two select companions a life of piety, mortification and chastity. St. Richard had a profound love of God, contempt for the riches of the world and a deep devotion to the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. From Paris, St. Richard travelled to Bologna, where he distinguished himself by his proficiency in canon law. Upon returning to England in 1235, Richard was elected Oxford's Chancellor. His former tutor, the devout St. Edmund of Abingdon, was consecrated Archbishop of Canterbury and firmly defended the rights of the Catholic Church against the exactions and usurpations of King Henry III. St. Richard shared St. Edmund's determination for clerical reform and supported papal rights even against the King of England. In 1237, Archbishop Edmund appointed Richard Chancellor of the Diocese of Canterbury. St. Richard joined the Archbishop during his exile at Pontigny and was with him when the Archbishop died in 1240. St. Richard himself heard Christ's call within his soul to the sacred priesthood and so responded wholeheartedly. He studied theology for two years with the Dominicans at Orleans. Upon returning to England, St. Richard became the parish priest at Charing and at Deal, but soon was reappointed Chancellor of Canterbury by the new Archbishop Boniface of Savoy. In 1244, St. Richard was elected Bishop of Chichester. However, King Henry III refused to accept him the king favouring the candidature of Robert Passelieu. Archbishop Boniface refused to confirm Passelieu, so both sides appealed to the Holy Father in Rome. King Henry III confiscated the See of Chichester's properties and revenues, but Pope Innocent IV confirmed St. Richard's election and consecrated him bishop at Lyon in March 1245. St. Richard then returned to Chichester, but the king refused to restore the seized properties for two years, finally relenting after being threatened with excommunication from the church. During this time, St. Richard lived at Tarring in the neighbourhood of the borough of Worthing, West Sussex, in the parish priest's house. The first documented description of Tarring was in AD 939, when King Athelstan granted the Manor of Tarring to Christchurch in Canterbury. The present flint and stone church is mostly 13th century. The holy sacrifice of the Mass was offered there for about 300 years, until the schism known as the Protestant Reformation. Today the church is used by the Protestant church.
From Tarring, St. Richard visited the parishes of his diocese on foot, cultivated figs, and offered the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, showing the same respect for our Lord under veil of the sacred species as if he beheld him face to face. His love of Christ and zeal for the salvation of souls saw him grow in profound holiness, whereupon he was loved by all. He himself loved poverty and practiced rigid frugality and temperance. From Tarring, St. Richard traveled through Sussex, offering the holy sacrifice of the Mass, hearing confessions, preaching, and performing miracles. After the full rights of the See of Chichester and its revenues were returned to him in 1246, St. Richard showed much eagerness to reform the clergy and also to recover greater order and reverence into the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Pope Innocent III had called for reform of the Church to raise the standards of the parish clergy educating them in the need for moral discipline. Bishop Richard was a keen advocate of such a reform. So it was that St. Richard produced a body of statutes with the aid of his chapter for the organisation of the church in his diocese and the expected conduct of its clergy. A copy of the statutes was to be kept by every priest in the Diocese of Chichester Many of the Catholic clergy lived in unrepentant mortal sin, secretly marrying, even though such alliances were not recognised by canon law and were invalid, thus leaving the woman's status to that of a mistress or a concubine. St. Richard endeavoured to suppress these scandals and the unchaste lifestyles of the clergy in the Diocese of Chichester with relentless austerity. Saint Benedict of Nursia had warned the faithful in the 4th century, saying, Fear the day of judgment, dread hell, desire eternal life with all your soul, keep the memory of death daily before your eyes. Through all of Christ's preaching, he speaks to us of hell, so as to leave no room for doubt. Our Saviour says, If thy eye scandalise thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee with one eye to enter into the kingdom of God than having two eyes to be cast into the hell of fire. And again, after the judgment, the good will go into life everlasting, the wicked into everlasting punishment. Why does our Divine Master speak to us this way? The reason is that He is truth itself. His soul contemplates unceasingly the immeasurable majesty and the infinite sanctity of the Father. It knows what is required by this justice, which cannot permit evil to go unreproved. For Christ tells us in Luke 12, Fear ye him who hath power to cast the body and soul into hell. In hell, where the damned are given entirely into the power of Satan, the implacable fury of the demons is concentrated with special venom on the Christian, for in him they see the image of the man God. And if the damned soul be that of a priest, its torments will be augmented beyond all descriptions. In the priest, Satan sees one who formerly, in the name of Jesus Christ, had the mission of thwarting his reign among men. Formerly, Satan was obliged to respect him on account of the priestly character imprinted on his soul. Now that the priest has fallen, rejected by God, and deprived of his power, the devil makes him his plaything.
St. Richard's clarity of the reality of sin, of death, judgment, heaven and hell, made him work tirelessly for the souls of the priests and people given to his care. The Council of Vatican II in this present age of the Church reaffirmed these timeless truths in the councils and documents of the 20th century. In St. Richard's statutes, it was decreed that so-called married clergy should be deprived of their benefices. Their concubines were to be denied the privileges of the church during their lives and also after death. They were pronounced incapable of inheriting any property from their so-called husbands and any such bequests would be donated for the upkeep of the cathedral. St. Richard determined that the vow of chastity was to be required of candidates for ordination to the sacred priesthood. Priests were to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass in clean robes, to use a silver or golden chalice, thoroughly clean corporals, and at least two consecrated pools were to be placed on the altar. The cross was to be planted in front of the celebrant, the bread was to be of the purest wheat and flour, the wine mixed with water. The elements were not to be kept more than seven days, when carried to a sick person, to be enclosed in a pyx, and the priest to be preceded by a cross, a candle, holy water and bell. Priests who clipped or slurred the words of the sacred liturgy by rushing were to be suspended. St. Richard also reminded the clergy that they should wear their proper dress and not imitate what the lay people wore, neither were they allowed to wear their hair long. The names of excommunicated persons were to be read out four times a year in the parish churches. On one occasion, St. Richard defrocked a priest who had seduced a nun out of her convent. In doing so, St. Richard turned aside a petition from King Henry III in the priest's favour. In maintaining discipline, St. Richard was inflexible as bishop, especially in chastising crimes in the clergy. No intercession of the king, archbishop and several other prelates could prevail with him to mitigate the punishment of a priest who had sinned against chastity. Yet penitent sinners he received with inexpressible tenderness and charity. St. Richard was also militant in protecting the clergy from abuse. He also imposed severe penance on knights who attacked priests. During his time as Bishop of Chichester, St. Richard, in person, visited the sick buried the dead, and sought out and relieved the poor. When his steward complained that his arms exceeded his income, then, said he, sell my plate and my horse. Saint Richard preached the word of God to his flock with that unction and success which only an eminent spirit of prayer could produce. A prayer attributed to him survives today. Our Lord often worked miracles through St. Richard as a sign of his presence and approval of the bishop. One miracle occurred on the Selsey Peninsula. While processing out in the open, 
a gust of wind blew out all of the candles, attributed to Satan, who was often furious with St. Richard's holiness and prayers for souls. However, the candle that St. Richard was holding suddenly came alight again. His attendant noticed, but the bishop bade him to remain silent and continued humbly on the procession. In 1252, St. Richard took a commission from the Pope to preach the crusade throughout Sussex and Kent, urging people to take the cross or give money for the endeavour. St. Richard understood that Jerusalem and the Holy Land must be regained for Christendom, since the many churches and sites protecting the sacred places where Christ had lived, preached, died and risen from the dead were being defiled and desecrated by the Saracens. Of particular concern was the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, built by Saint Helen and her son, the Emperor Constantine, over the site of Golgotha. And of course, concern was for the well-being of the native Christians there. However, it was while he was employed in preaching the crusade that Saint Richard fell sick of a fever The saint foretold his own death and prepared himself by the most devout ejaculations of divine love and thanksgiving. Saint Richard died a holy death in a hospital at Dover called God's House on the 3rd of April in the year of our Lord 1253 of his episcopal dignity the 9th aged 56. After his death, St. Richard's body was conveyed to Chichester and interred before the altar, which he himself had consecrated in his cathedral to the memory of St. Edmund. The tomb became a great shrine with the fame of miraculous cures and of three persons raised to life at his tomb, moved the Pope to appoint commissaries to inquire into the life of the saint and the truth of the miracles. So it was that Saint Richard of Chichester was solemnly canonized by Pope Urban IV in 1262. Almost 400 years after the death of St. Richard, in the early 16th century, the church was once more in need of reformation. Our Lord inspired many great reformers to arrive in the various structures of his church, including Pope Paul III, who initiated the Council of Trent, a commission of cardinals tasked with institutional reform, addressing issues such as corrupt bishops and priests, the selling of indulgences, and other financial abuses, condemning heresies committed by Protestantism and, in response to them, key statements and clarification of the Church's doctrine and teachings. When the King of England was unable to obtain from the Church an annulment of his marriage from his lawfully wedded Queen, Catherine of Aragon, the King broke from the Catholic Church forcibly taking the country of England with him into schism. King Henry VIII declared himself by law the head of the church in England and usurped church property, buildings and lands, destroyed monasteries and consecrated his own bishops, thus ending the line of apostolic succession within his new church of England. He then replaced any remaining loyal Catholic clergy with clerics of his own. During the episcopate of the first Anglican Bishop of Chichester, Richard Sampson, King Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell ordered the destruction of the Shrine of St. Richard in Chichester Cathedral in 1538, with the intention of usurping the gifts given to the Shrine by the people. The document ordering the destruction of the Shrine was issued to a Sir William Goring of Burton and a William Ernley, 
they received £40 for carrying out the commission on the 20th of December, 1538. England had been a Catholic country for centuries, and many kings of England had dedicated the country to the Mother of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, under the title of Mary's Dowry since the 11th century. Despite the widespread destruction of Catholic Church property, statues, shrines, roods and images in England, devotion to the saints and the Mother of God remained strong among the English faithful. In the 18th century, with the passing of the Catholic Emancipation Act, Catholics were allowed to worship freely once more within the realm. The Catholic Church of St Richard of Chichester was opened in Chichester in March 1958, having been endowed by the Dowager Countess of Newburgh, a recusant Catholic, and also by two serving women. The Blessed Sacrament is reserved there today in a chapel once dedicated to Our Lady of Walsingham. Walsingham was, like the Shrine of St Richard of Chichester, one of the most important places of pilgrimage in Christendom for many centuries, until its destruction by order of King Henry VIII. St Richard of Chichester is remembered today by the Anglican Church of England with honour. A statue of St Richard by Philip Jackson stands by the main entrance of Chichester Cathedral. Every year, the Anglican Dean and Chapter invite the Catholic clergy of Chichester to offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass in the Cathedral. In art, St Richard is often depicted as a bishop with a chalice at his feet. This derives from an occasion when he dropped the sacred chalice while offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, but miraculously the precious blood of Christ did not spill from it. He is sometimes shown kneeling with the chalice before him, ploughing his brother's fields or as a bishop blessing his flock with a chalice nearby. St Richard is the patron saint of the county of Sussex in England and his feast day is celebrated by all Christians on the 3rd of April, the day of his death and entry into heaven. The 16th of June, the day of the translation of his relics, is also celebrated as Sussex Day. We ask the Holy Saint Richard of Chichester to intercede especially today for our priests and our bishops.